Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The national transmission company South Africa has been trading for just over a month and is starting to assert its identity. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of its immediate priorities. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Can you provide some background to the NTCSA and how it fits into the electricity sector? Yes, so uh, for many years, in fact going all the way back to the 1998 white paper, there was a view that transmission business needed to be separated from that of distribution and generation. And this was the way the world was moving and it is true that is the way the world has actually moved. So that South Africa is a major laggard in this uh, regard. Then there was a, uh, some moves to towards that. Uh, that then got stopped uh, when load shedding, I think, really started to rear its head. And there was a focus really on getting Eskom to build very large power stations and not so much on the restructuring of the industry. Um, then in 2019, uh, when things were really getting bad on the load shedding front, and there was a need to really le lean on other levers outside of Eskom, there was a view that we, that we really had to get moving with the restructuring and there was a, a road map that was published by the Department of Public Enterprises which is in the process of now being wound down about the separation of this business. And uh, it was seen as something that needed to be happened really urgently but there were a number of balls in the air at that time as you can imagine with load shedding really intensifying and uh, the, the financial health and the operational state of, the, of Eskom really in decline at the same time. So there were many issues, but the restructuring did get underway under the leadership uh, of Eskom, and uh, it's a major change management exercise. And we've seen the first signs of this unbundling process. It's really restructuring at this stage because uh, NTCSA still falls under Eskom Holdings as its holding company. And its balance sheet has, while the financials have been, have been separated, there's still some fears that there's, there hasn't been a full financial liberation of this business. But it has happened now. And as you mentioned, it started trading oh, just over a month ago on the 1st of July. And we have this for the first time, this independent entity, which is very important uh, for the, the system and the future system as we are undergoing a once in a generation uh, restructuring of the electricity supply industry overall, brought about by really technology changes and the cheapest technologies now being variable renewable energy, um, as well as a, a, an imperative now to decarbonize the industry. And to do that, you need the grid. And this is the grid company. It's also the system operator. So they're the ones that turn on and off the power when we need to ro do rotational power uh, load shedding. Uh, from uh, the system control in, in Wimmerpan next to the Germiston Lake. So they're a very important part of the system, plus they're the market operator. So we've seen a few attempts to bring the separation about. We had a bill that went through Parliament, the ISMO bill that, that was uh, then withdrawn. Uh, we now have the Electricity Regulation Amendment Bill, which has still not been signed, but very much part of that is a separated transmission system operator. Uh, so that is the future of the system, it's the heart of the electricity system. So a very important part of uh, the evolving electricity supply industry. As a license holder, it will seek to secure its own allowable revenue during future tariff deliberations. Yeah, I think this is an important signal that's being sent. So we know we're just about to enter this season of public hearings. We haven't seen yet the official uh, request before the National Energy Regulator of South Africa, but we have already seen the leaked reports saying that uh, over 440 billion in allowable revenue is what the joined up Eskom would be applying for, and that's the signal that it's been sending to Solga as well as the National Treasury, which it, ha it has to consult before it makes a submission to, uh, to NERSA. So NERSA hasn't published the final um, request that would translate into a 36% plus tariff hike from the 1st of April next year. So you can imagine the, the outcry that's going to happen in the next few months. But as part of this process, it's, it's been made clear by the NTCSA leadership that they are going to be making their own ring fence dedicated application. So the, uh, I think there was already a view that Eskom had to reflect the unbundling that's underway. So the generation business and what its reliable revenue should be 
transmission, what its allowable revenue should be, um, and uh, distribution likewise. And this actually has theoretically been the case under the MYPD system, the multi-year price determination system, for some years. But when it comes back to the ranch, back at Eskom, uh, it's very opaque then what happens to that revenue and where it get, uh, gets sent. And for the first time, uh, the interim CEO of NTCSA, uh, Sekomoto Kierkegaard, has given insight into what actually happened. So uh, during the uh, five-year period um, from uh, 20, 2018 that NERSA made a determination, they actually granted tr the transmission business 44 billion for that five-year period. Uh, in the end, after Eskom reprioritized in its board where the money would go, and you must remember there was load shedding, there was diesel crisis, having to buy diesel. There was a build program that was massively late and over budget, and as well there were collapses of you know, stacks, etc. So this was during a, a period where the generation business was, the spotlight was on it and it needed a lot of money. Money was diverted from transmission to uh, generation. So in the end, only 19 billion was approved by the board for transmission for that period. And actually the business only spent 16 billion on the grid. So now we're sitting wondering why we've got this massive grid backlog. Well, it's because of those sort of things. So there was a cost, a hidden cost to vertical in integration that we, that we weren't really aware of. And now with a dedicated application to NERSA, I think that's going to be made very clear. What does transmission need? Both to maintain a massive asset, as a massive machine uh, that, it, that, it, that it really exists, and then to start really moving ahead with its transmission development plan, which really the, the, the sort of uh, headline figures you know, this 14,000 kilometers of new uh, high voltage uh, corridors that need to be rolled out by 2032-33. So they need money for that. So it's a very important signal that they're going to be going to NERSA for a dedicated ring fenced amount that's going to go back to the NTSCSA, which now has its own independent board and can't be pushed up or down into either the generation business or we hope or into the uh, distribution business, so as it has in the past. So it's a very, very important next step. Does it have the capacity to deliver on the ambitious national transmission plan? I think that's a big question. You know, it's a big plan. It's almost 400 billion rand. So it's a very big plan, and it's, it's not clear how it will be financed. Ultimately, it's, we, you know, we have a user pay system. So ultimately, it has to come out of the tariff. Um, and there is money now dedicated for the first few years of the build program. But the first few build years of the build program are, are very, uh, it's a hockey stick nature, uh, the build program. So the first, there's not a lot happening. And then they, in the last sort of five years of the build program, under the current TDP, they see a lot of investment happening. So we need to be really building at a thousand Let's take the lines only, not the substations, et cetera. We need to be doing more than a thousand kilometers a year. We know we're near that, you know, sort of a hundred and something kilometers a year that's really uh, underway. So we, we, we need to accelerate that. Now, where is the problem? If the tariff, if they get a cost reflective tariff, they should have the money for it. But is that the only problem that, I that Eskim is facing? Uh, it's not clear. And that's why I think there's a lot of focus on getting independent power transmission into the system. Uh, uh, so there's a discussion, National Treasury has been very involved in this, the DBSA about setting a up a procurement office to try and get the private sector involved in rolling out the grid as well, grid infrastructure as well, not only um, NTCSA, which is, uh, is the key uh, uh, company that has to do it, also internally within the NTCSA, they're not only using EPCM as the model where they do all the planning and whatever the procurement themselves. They're going to look at an EPC model, which relies more on the contractors, puts more on the risk, but also a lot more workflow onto the, um, onto the contractors rather than just internal ESCOM capacity. But there is a view that actually the 400 billion is not the full picture. If you have to look at the full grid system, there's a paper out by Meridian that shows that we need to do a lot more in the collector networks, not just the core network, the backbone, which is 
uh, there's this 400 billion rand, and possibly it's, it's double that amount. If you look at the whole system, all the way down to the distribution, which we know is creaking. So for NTSCSA and even the distribution entity that hasn't been unbundled out of ESKIM, to perform that, it's going to, by itself, I think it's going to be a tall order. And they don't have the capacity, whether they even have the money. And how are we going to fund this directly through the tariff <laughs> is going to be difficult. We know there's an affordability crisis on the tariff side. We know other parts of ESKIM business also needs to, to move to so-called cost reflectivity and that's going to require hikes. So whether NERSA can give the sort of revenue that uh, transmission business is going to be asking for uh, in one go is also not clear. I think there's going to have to be a phasing. And so other sources of capital are going to maybe be needed. Ultimately, it'll have to be paid through the, the, the tariff. But looking at leveraging the, the debt financing, those sort of things have to come into play now to try and get this grid built at the, the scale and pace that we need and we know we're near that at, at the current moment. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.